Hi again, everyone. Today, we are going to talk about perfectionism, what it is, and why it can sometimes be a problem for our health and our well-being. But before we do, let's have a second here and look at how perfection might show up for us in our life. I would encourage you to think about it and reflect. Are you the kind of person who can't have a lopsided picture on the wall, for example? Or maybe you're a perfectionist in just one area of your life, like you're trying to have a perfect golf swing, or you like your eyebrows to be perfect. Or maybe you like to have a very neat office or a neat car. Um, and something that I'm really interested in, uh, a really fascinating question here, is whether perfectionism can ever be moderate. Is there ever a healthy level of perfectionism? Uh, do we have any uh, part-time perfectionists in the house? Um, yeah, so maybe I'm totally wrong about that. Maybe it's not possible to have a healthy level of perfectionism. Maybe there's something about the nature of perfectionism that makes it kind of all-consuming. That it's kind of an all-or-nothing uh, trait we've got going on. So that's an interesting question. Uh, but let's get down to it. Let's have a look here. Let's start with our psychologically informed stuff and look at how psychologists define perfectionism. Um, and that is as the pursuit of high standards and of self-criticism over not meeting those high standards. And when we look at perfectionism as psychologists, we focus on two main types or main functions. Um, and that is c cognitions, thoughts, um, or behaviours. So we have the thoughts and the behaviours. Um, and the behaviours are the things that we choose to do out in the world. So particular perfectionistic concerns or thought patterns have been shown to be more likely to lead to negative outcomes for us, for our well-being, including an increased vulnerability to a variety of mental and physical health conditions. But there is, yeah, there is some good evidence that that is the case. So we're going to take a look now at how our perfectionist thinking uh, can af affect our, our well-being and our health. So in research, we see a link between perfectionist thinking and clinical disorders. And that can include things like eating disorders, obsessive compulsive disorder and anxiety disorders, but also non-suicidal self-harm. So as well as those psychopathologies, those mental health disorders, um, all of these have the potential to be life-threatening in some way and uh, threatening to our physical well-being too, and as well as impacting on our ability to thrive and be happy. This is quite serious stuff. Another problem is that perfectionism can bring into our lives more frequent and more intense self-criticism which might lead to feelings of shame. And that is the feeling that we are not good enough in some way or that we're intrinsically broken, defective or in some way unworthy. Now, shame is one of the most powerful emotions that we can experience as human beings. And it can also be pathological. That is disordered and harmful to our well-being. Perfectionism and shame can be linked. Uh, and sometimes when we learn early in life that we're not good enough unless we meet some unrealistic standard set by somebody else uh, often early in life, uh, that can teach us to be ashamed um, and to struggle with perfectionism later in our lives. For this reason, people who experience early trauma, trauma in childhood, uh, can sometimes struggle with perfectionism and shame. So we've, we've got a kind of chicken and egg situation developed here where shame and perfectionism can perpetuate one another. They kind of feed off each other and just keep going. So as well as our early life experiences, what else could affect whether we become perfectionist or not? 
Well, in psychology, we can also look at something called individual differences, and that is elements of personality. Uh, usually this is done using the five factor model, also called the big five or the ocean model, which consists of the five factors, openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. So one study, for example, found here that low neuroticism was negatively linked to perfectionism, where high conscientiousness was linked to higher perfectionism. Another idea around perfectionism is that it is linked to the idea of type A personality, which was defined by Friedman and Rosenman in 1976. So they were, I believe they were cardiologists, they were studying uh, cardiac patients and what they found is that, uh, um, yeah, they found some personality differences uh, going on amongst their patients. Um, and it can be found in people who have high competitiveness traits who are linked to that type A personality. So those elements of personality might also be higher in perfectionism. So if, if you're that kind of uh, competitive person, then you might find that you, you have some more uh, perfectionist tendencies going on. Another great question here is whether perfectionism can ever be helpful or healthy. Now, you remember at the start of this video when I said that psychologists measure perfectionism in two ways, by looking at the thoughts and then looking at the actions and the behaviours. Well, there's some evidence that perfectionistic strivings, as they're termed, that's the behaviours or the actions, can sometimes be adaptive. And it's a fact that some actions do have a measurable or an arbitrary perfect result, don't they? So let's take an example. When a darts player scores 180 with three darts, that, co that could be considered a perfect score. Uh, but for the purposes of measurement, measurement of an action, maybe, maybe perfect is a useful word. But we must make a distinction between the perfect score or the action and the player. Uh, the action might have a perfect score, but the person themselves can't be measured by the same criteria, can they? So in the case of um, perfection, perfectionism here, uh, that word can sometimes benefit us and work for us in our lives rather than hinder or harm us when we're trying to measure something. <clears throat> Maybe it can be a good way to measure or motivate ourselves towards self-improvement. But somebody pointed out to me recently, uh, a paradox exists here, that if we are perfect at something, then of course we can't improve at it anymore, can we? So by that logic, we can probably question whether perfectionism is a reliable tool of self-improvement as well. So let, just reflect how it is for you. Does perfectionism work for you in, in a small sense and maybe it, it really works for you? If the answer to that is, yeah, it works for me, then the question I would ask you is this. Does it work all the time? Do you lose anything in the fire here? What are the costs of your perfectionism? And just get curious and honest about that. Really look at the pros and cons of that perfectionist behavior or thought pattern that you've got going on. For example, let's say that I'm a person who loves to focus on perfectionist work. But yeah, in doing so, perhaps I might lose sight, uh, get a bit blinkered, lose sight of my family and miss an important family event, maybe my child's school play or important birthday or anniversary party. So maybe my perfectionism in that case might cause me to, um, yeah, miss out on other areas of my life. Uh, or maybe perfectionism might cause me to be competitive with my work colleagues or even hostile towards them rather than being cooperative so it could affect my relationships. Uh, so we can see that there might be some interpersonal consequences going on with that. So that is definitely uh, on the con list, isn't it? So even if, 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 my perfection, if, if my performance does approach perfection, I do really well in my work role, then is there any guarantee that I'm going to be ha happier or healthier or more fulfilled? 
is the result of that because I'm losing something there, aren't I? So elements such as our social relationships with others can be impacted here and perfectionism can be linked to that competitive and combative type of relationship as well. It can also lead us to most unfairly or inaccurately compare ourselves to others. Uh, and social comparison can again lead to shame but it can also lead to another problematic and sometimes really powerful emotion and that is envy and that's a desire to have something that another person's got uh, so again we have perfectionism provoking and kind of stoking the fire stoking up those strong emotions for us that might then affect our thoughts and our behavior all potential things to go potentially go on the con list rather than the pro list so what can we do then if higher than average perfectionism is impacting on our well-being? Well, once we've become aware of that perfectionism and it might not be working for us all the time, um, then of course, then we can do something about it. Uh, those unwanted effects that, that might be impacting on our lives. So next week, we are going to take a look at how to go about do, go about doing just that. We're going to have a look at what we could do to um, to address our perfectionism. Until then, something that we can all do every day is to try and give ourselves a break and be a little kinder to ourselves. As the Dalai Lama stresses, when you want others to be happy, focus on compassion. And when you want yourself to be happy, focus on compassion as well. So I will see you next week, as, uh, uh, of course, as always, like, share, subscribe, let me know what you think about this amazingly um, interesting topic. I think it really does get discussion going, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And I will see you next time. Thank you for joining me.